Hello guys, welcome back to another video. So we just got Unreal Engine 5 Preview 1 released and there are a lot of changes as well as updates and I wanna go over some of the big updates to Unreal Engine 5. So this is basically called Preview 1 and before it we had Unreal Engine 5 Early Access. So as you can see, we're getting closer and closer to the official release of the shipping build of Unreal Engine 5. Here we are actually in the editor itself. There are quite a bit of UI changes that I want to go over but more importantly what you see here in the viewport is a change and also uh, modernize some of the game templates such as this one the third person template and I'll show you some of the other templates but another big thing is they added support for massive open world maps and in fact if you go to file new level uh, they've added a new open world template map so I'm going to get all into the open world stuff at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around. But first off, let's go ahead and talk about some of the main UI changes to the editor. Basically, the main changes here are, well, it's a lot more cleaner. As you can see, uh, all of the different modes, the modes buttons, are changed into this little select mode. So you can toggle between, you know, your landscape mode, modeling mode, chaos, fracturing editor and so on and then your create button was uh, moved from down here to up here so all of your uh, volumes your lights all of that stuff is just in this one single button so it's a lot more cleaner and also the play button is right here instead of having it over here and it's a lot better especially if you have Unreal Engine on like a smaller monitor or a laptop display I'd find that you know having all of the menu buttons here on this one single bar uh, would push the play button off screen. Now we still have the content drawer here. There hasn't been a whole ton of changes to that. But one of the biggest changes here is if you open up Quixel Bridge, it's right here under this cube plus button here. Uh, basically, they've they integrated Bridge as an actual window, so you can actually drag and drop this bridge menu and dock it inside of the engine now. Uh, previously you'd have it as a separate window and it was kind of awkward uh, to move around. But one of the major changes is that you can grab any 3D asset and I can show you with any 3D model here for this rock for example you can just drag it into your level and it will instantly uh, download basically the mesh into your game. So you don't have to wait for it to download first and then click a plus button to add it into your game. What they mention is that you can drag it into the game and it uses basically a temporary me placement mesh. While it's actually downloading the mesh in the background, you'll get this uh, temporary placement mesh so you can move it around your level and while it's downloading it will update the mesh and basically replace it with the finished downloaded model. So this is just a really fast way to uh, get assets into your game. I mean, it's really as simple as drag and drop now. Uh, but yeah, those are the major changes to Quixel Bridge. Really nice that they've added this as a dockable window, so you could dock it here on the side as well. And I'll probably keep my window here. I think this is probably a good location for that. But in other updates, uh, we do have this third person blueprint template that I want to show you guys some of the changes to the actual template. Uh, they also modified the first person blueprint template and the top down template. So I'll show that here in a second. But first off we have the third person character. So they've uh, obviously added this new map. It looks a lot more modern and it also has the lumen lighting and volumetric clouds uh, but you can see these cubes so we can kind of just move these around and these things have physics one of the things that they updated here in the character is actually the blueprint the animation blueprint and I've actually dug into the animation blueprint a little bit and they've changed the way they have it all set up but it, it basically performs the exact same now all of these new template levels are pretty neat because you can actually modify the geometry inside of the template levels using this new grid base blocking system. 
So if you change the select mode here to modeling and under the poly model tab here on the left you click the cube grid modeling and basically this will allow you to select any of the cubes that you see here in the level just by dragging selecting. And if you press E you can raise some of these blocks out and basically you can block out your level pretty quickly and I'm not too sure on all the controls yet I just recently started playing around with this but you can actually take some of the blocks here on the side and then select these two points and bring them out to create a ramp so there's actually a lot of stuff you can do with with the uh, cube grid tool and with these new template maps now here's the first person template also a new level here uh, one of the main things you're going to notice or main differences is that the character is not holding the weapon by default. So you can actually go and pick up the weapon blueprint. So they've added basically sort of a pickup actor. Then of course you have your uh, cubes that you can shoot. And you can shoot the uh, yellow balls here. So yeah, that's basically the first person template. And again, you have uh, this grid-based cube block out map that you can modify and they've also done a bit of changes to the first person blueprint template and the actual blueprints themselves like for example taking all of the weapon logic like firing the projectile and moving it into this separate BP rifle class so just some little changes here and there with how these things work in the back end now here's the top down template what's basically new is you got this really cool uh, move to icon or effect so when you click your mouse you can see these little arrows pointing to kind of where your character is moving to so just a little cool update here to the top-down template personally I never really messed with the top-down template at all um, so I can't really talk too much on changes other than the visual ones that you see here but yeah those are just some of the different changes that they've made here now, one of the other things I want to show off here is the new open world template. So if you go to file, new level, uh, they have this new open world level template. If we go ahead and create this, basically you can see it's this open world map. Now it might not look too big, but basically it's actually set up using world partition. So you can see all the grid cells there. And if we hit play here, can jump in here and basically run around so you can see it's a really simple uh, landscape with some grass on it and we have these volumetric clouds as well as the lighting so I thought this is a pretty cool template that they've added now, I believe all this stuff has already been out for the past six months on the Unreal Engine GitHub but we're finally seeing it here on the launcher which means that we're getting really close to the official launch of the shipping build of Unreal Engine 5. Now I mentioned that uh, with this preview uh, basically you can have supports for massive open world maps and what I mean by that is they're using what they call large world coordinates which previously I guess Unreal Engine 4 used floats for coordinates whereas Unreal Engine 5 large world coordinates uses the double so how big of a map can you actually make within Unreal Engine 5 well here's actually this video that I found on Twitter where this guy had basically traveled from the world origin 1 trillion kilometers from world origin so he starts from basically 1 kilometer from world origin and he just goes down to 10 kilometers then up to 100 kilometers and so on and basically kind of testing out how big of a map can you actually make within Unreal Engine 5. Now the limitations that you had with making these large sort of maps is uh, once you reached about 20 kilometers in Unreal Engine 4 you'd start experiencing a lot of issues with uh, jitter and uh, general physics problems and so they had what was called origin rebasing where they would take you know the the origin of the game and they would shift it to where the player is currently at so that sort of system would allow for basically as large of a map as you wanted because they would just shift the origin every 
20 or so kilometers. Now with World Partition, I haven't really uh, dug too in depth about the details of uh, how it works, if it does use the same uh, origin rebasing technology, but so far Unreal Engine 5 is looking very promising for making open world games. And personally, I'm really excited to try and test out uh, creating some large maps as well as uh, personally testing out some of the landscape features, seeing if they added anything new to that. But yeah, that was pretty much it. Uh, those are basically all of the things that, that kind of stood out to me. There are a bunch of other features and things that they've added to the engine, and they have the full list up on their website. And even on uh, the website, they don't even list some of the new things that they've added. I mean, there's some new experimental plugins that are even hiding uh, inside of Preview 1. So yeah, definitely go and check this out because there are a lot of new tools and things to play around with. And overall, it's feeling like it's living up to the hype. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.